Now let's get back to Nariman Baravish, the chief economist at IHS. He's a former senior economist with the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. He's also ranked as a Bloomberg best because he's one of the most accurate forecasters on the economy. And he joins us from Lexington, Massachusetts. I was telling you during the break, Nariman, the patience of a saint. You've been waiting for almost a half an hour. Thanks so much. Welcome back to Bottom Line. Thank you, Mark. Nariman, uh, before we get into the FOMC minutes that we were discussing at the top of the hour, let's talk about these budget battles on Congress. First, uh, on Capitol Hill, first, the likelihood of a government shutdown this Friday. What do you think? I think, as Peter was saying earlier, that the risk to both sides is huge of doing something like this. This kind of game of chicken is going to backfire on all the politicians in Washington. So they'll figure a way out, whether it's a short sort of a few day stopgap or whatever, I suspect they'll figure it out over this week, over the next couple of days, and keep things going. Um, maybe the Republicans will be able to extract a little bit more from the president. It's hard to tell. So far, they've been actually fairly successful in getting a lot of cuts through doing it this way. We'll see. Yeah, and, and but I, I really don't think they're going to they're gonna shut down the government. Yeah, now, Nariman, as uh, Peter was also alluding to, the House Budget Committee Chairman Paul Ryan today also unveiling a budget proposal to cut about $6.5 trillion over the upcoming uh, decade. As Peter said, a lot of folks in Washington say that that proposal would be dead on arrival. Is that that a fair sentiment? Well, you're right, that, and Peter's right, that, that there's certainly uh, a lot of politicians are scared uh, stiff uh, of doing something like this, but that's exactly what's needed. What's needed, uh, you know, without getting into the specifics, what's needed is a, a big, big cuts uh, in spending and probably tax increases as well, which nobody wants to talk about, uh, to get the uh, budget deficit and the debt under control. You need to do big things, and, and, and in that sense, one has to hand it to Ryan. Uh, it's, it's pretty courageous. Uh, Nariman, let's talk about the FOMC minutes. Uh, we got those at the top of the hour. And our economics editor, Michael McKee, I believe, was right on point. He said it's a clear case of a divided group. How divided are they? Well, clearly there are there the hawks, if you will, who are worried about inflation, and then the doves who are not worried about inflation. That's a simplistic view, but it's about right. Uh, they're not divided enough to, to not that's a double negative, to not vote unanimously for the last round. So clearly there's differences of opinion, but they came together and essentially have voted uh, uh, to keep QE2 going through this, the quantitative easing through June and then keep interest rates low, at least so far. Um, but there clearly a, a number of them are starting to feel queasy about the, the prospects for inflation. Is this at, at least in part due to some of the economic numbers we've been seeing in the last couple of days that drop, for instance, in the jobless rate? Are uh, some of the members getting a sense that the economic recovery might in fact be picking up steam, so maybe it's time to pull back on QE2? Well, as you know, there's conflicting evidence. I mean, certainly if you just abstract from what's going on in the Middle East and Japan, the economy was looking very good. But those two shocks, if you will, will slow things down. We've shaved off almost a half a percentage point off the growth rate for this year, um, 2011, because of those two shocks. So I think they were all thinking about those as well as to what they mean. Um, so it is a little mixed. Uh, you know, you can pick and choose which data you want to focus on, depending on which side of the argument you're on. And Nariman, speaking of shock, you know, you, you take a look at how the bond market was reacting. I'm checking my screen here. Ten year now, the yields at 3.49 percent. What was that reaction? Well, again, it's hard to tell. I mean, it's just again, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that the yield go back down again. It's it's amazing, actually, when you think about it, how little it's moved. Uh, I mean, it, it has moved, but it's it's not a huge amount. You know, just given all this discussion about debt and the deficits and, and oil prices and so forth, it's really remarkable how little bond yields have moved. And, and Nariman, you, you mentioned oil prices. How does that play into this equation when we see oil prices up over 100, 110, $120 a barrel? Uh, right now we're looking at NYMEX crude. It's down over a quarter of a percent today at uh, 108.20 right now. How does this play into the economic dynamic here? Well, at the current levels, 108, 109, below 110, there'll be a, a, a bit of a hit to growth, a couple of tens, three tens, something like that to growth, but not a horrible uh, impact. Uh, in other words, no double dip, you know, no recession. But if we get up to 130, 140, then you start to see much bigger impacts. I think that's when I start to worry. We're not there yet, probably won't get there for a while, uh, but that, that, that's the, the kind of threshold we have to be looking at. He is the chief economist of IHS, Nariman Barovis, joining us from Lexington, Massachusetts. Again, thanks for your time and your patience today. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you.